Okay, so in this video, I just want to address a common trope amongst like people who don't really use free software or uh, like it that much, I guess. And that's basically the, the Linux people trope. And I'll also address some of the comments I got in the last video. So usually there's this common trope that, ooh, Linux people are just, um, ooh, they hate like proprietary software or whatever, and they're like biased against it. And the truth is we're not really biased against it. It's basically that Community will always beat company because company is essentially saying that, oh yeah, uh, our so software, our source code is already the best. Okay. Our developers are the best. If the source code is the best, we're not going to share it with anybody. We're not going to let anybody else see it, improve it, uh, increase its performance, patch its vulnerabilities. We're not going to let anybody do that uh, because our developers are the best. That's kind of what, it's like an arrogance. It's a form of arrogance by communities because they believe their software is already the best. Whilst community and open source software, on the other hand, always being improved. It is available to the public eye. Anybody can see it. And if they see an improvement, they can patch it. If they see a vulnerability, they can patch it. They can make it more efficient. They can make it better. This is why open source software is always going to be better. It's going to be better in performance, functionality, and it's not going to spy on you because people can actually see what is happening and what code is being run, which is actually very important. I'm going to address that later as well. And now, okay, I'm going to start by addressing this comment because I believe it eloquently summarizes the kinds of comments I get regarding these IDEs against Neovim. All right. Uh, so first of all, mis this guy's username is Mr. Tan Guy. I haven't memorized it. That's how much I've been reading these comments. Thank you for your comment. Uh, I think it's very eloquent and I think it summarizes a lot of concerns and points which I overlooked in my video. So thank you. I tip, tip, tip my hat to you, sir. Okay. So let's get into this. JetBrains IDE. This person things that JetBrains IDE or like whatever, those are good. And to some degree, now, okay, JetBrains or whatever, it's a full-blown IDE. When you compare a full-blown IDE to just NeoVim or just Vim, obviously the full-blown IDE is going to have features. As this person pointed out in the comments, this guy's username is uh, Guri's Tech. Okay, I memorized that shit too. Right? As this guy pointed out, you can get plugins for almost everything. And now here's where I'm going to side with Mr. Okay, not side with anybody, but here's where I'm going to empathize a little bit, okay? Mr. Guri's Tech. This is actually his channel. This guy, you can, you see these gaps in DWM? This is called DWM. This person configured that shit. They, he patched that shit using the patch and the .diff files and stuff. So someone like this who understands how to patch and plugins and all that stuff very well is going to find NeoVim very easy, right? As you get more competent, you assume that everybody else has the same skills as you. You take your skills for granted. This is something I kind of did, and this is something uh, I think Mr. Guri's tech, I hope I'm saying that correctly, is doing in this comment. Now, okay, I know this sounds a little hubristic. Huh? <laughs> I have skilled people. I'm better than all of you. <laughs> I am, though, because, <laughs> you know, I get that mad Vim key bindings. Okay, first of all, I'm going to I'm gonna address it right here, man. Uh, Patching NeoVim and stuff takes a lot of getting used to, okay? I used to use VS Code for a long time, and I thought it was the best, and I see a lot of people who have the same mentality that I had, but NeoVim is possible to patch. It's not easy, okay? There's a learning curve involved, okay? You're going to have to learn what plugins are. You're going to have to learn what GitHub is. I mean, you probably know what that is anyway, but you're going to have to learn how to do it, okay? And you're not going to have some GUI interface to help you. Like this, these JetBrain IDEs, they're just full of these GUI interfaces where you just click, 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 click everything, okay? That, well, I accidentally click. That is not good. That promotes digital illiteracy. Not to mention you don't know the source code that's running. You don't know the telemetry that these JetBrain IDEs are doing. And that is a serious concern. File watchers, there you go. I mean, okay, this, uh, this Mr. Gary G. <laughs> Very snarky way of putting this, okay? <laughs> Mate, try not to be an obnoxious cunt, okay? We want people to join the community, not think we're a bunch of insufferable nerd pieces of shit, okay? But, yes, this is a massive problem. Surveillance and human rights is a massive problem. You see, I hear people call me Linux fan, FOSS fan. We're black people who protested for civil rights back in the day, fans of human rights. No, that makes no fun. Like, no, man. Like, the, think, for example, that this shit made my day, bro. I'm already a red pot arch user using Tor. <laughs> Bro, me and this guy, we are gonna, we are gonna uh, dab on the oppressed proprietary cucks, okay? We, we, me and this guy dab on them with our liberation, okay? But you get the point. Privacy and telemetry are legitimate concerns which are indefensible. Okay? You cannot defend telemetry. I, I don't think anyone in the comments have, has defended telemetry as well. I keep hearing people say you can literally do everything on VS Code, look it up, yada, yada. Vim is better, literally, okay? 
And in VS Code, there is telemetry. Yes, you can turn it off, but is it really off? And yes, there are many forks, but at this point, like even Codium or whatever, Microsoft controls VS Code. Okay, let's be honest. And the truth is, you don't need that. When I used to use VS Code, you can just get a plugin by clicking. Oh, you click install. You go to the plugin marketplace. Uh, just like Mr. Tang, I expressed here. Like, bro, you know there's a market for, where did it say here? A marketplace. There you go. They're not sure if you get a plugin marketplace with tons of, do you know what GitHub is, my guy? You can get literal source code to extend your Vim functionality using fucking GitHub itself. And boom, you can alter the source code yourself and no telemetry. And it respects your human rights and it's fucking free. You don't have to pay 200 bucks a year and everything you described it. Like I said, plug in now. Okay. There's this other person called Simon M. Another comment I had, which I found pretty interesting. Okay. Here it is. Uh, his username is Simon M. Mr. Simon M. I tip my hat to you, sir. Thank you for the comment. Okay. Now this person uses Vim plugin with IntelliJ. Bro, there's this game called Switch. I'm going to tell you about it real soon. Okay? This game my father told me years ago. It's called Switch. Uh, the premise of the game is you take one finger, put it in your mouth, the other one goes up your asshole. When he says go, you switch. Okay. Okay. Just, just switch. Okay. And you're good to go. Okay. Now, many people want out of box IDEs. Okay. Everybody wants something that works out of box. I don't like out of box things because again, they promote digital illiteracy through very gooey interfaces. Okay. Learn to patch, learn to download a minimal software and patch on top of it the functionality you want. And not that hard to do. I understand it's daunting and I will empathize with you there, but it's not that bad. But you want an out of box solution. I got one for you or many for you. Lunar Vim. Okay. So what these guys have done is they've taken Vim and they've added plugins to it already like LSP support. I'll show you that right here. They've added linting and all that kind of shit. See this auto completion, linting, debugging. They've added all that shit for you and they've put it into an IDE already. And the reason this is better than VS Code or any of those jet brain cuck IDEs is because you can actually change it. So you see linting, formatting, debugging already put in fuzzy finder. That's probably telescope. Let's be honest. The most popular finder in NeoVim. Uh, and okay. Just because Lunar Vim has an opinion doesn't mean you have to share it. You can change the source code toggled on and off in config. You can look at that config.lua. You can literally change the, the source code itself. You can change plugins, key mappings, add key mappings and the, the installation guy. They have videos, bro. They made this so easy. They made videos on how to do this stuff. You don't need, you can just, okay, and they have documentation as well. If you don't like reading because it's like, ooh, scary documentation. Look at this. This is cold. Oh my God. What is this? Ooh, scary. You can just watch the video. They have videos for this shit. Okay. So I was, or there are alternative. There's NV Chad. There's Astro Vim. There's like Doom Vim even. Like there's so many forks of this. And you want an out of box solution? Use this. Okay. I would recommend you configure and patch it yourself. Not that hard to learn, but guys, come on. This, you don't need a thousand IQ or a big dick to do it. Okay. You just need time and you just need to learn. Like this person here, this Mr. Tan guy, the comment I addressed originally, I don't think this person has actually used Vim before because he's literally, com he literally, he's literally comparing a full blown IDE to it. My guy, there are plugins as this person aptly pointed out. And yes, they are complicated, but I'll make videos helping you guys on that. And there are already many videos on YouTube, which teach you how to do that. So guys, please, there's no such thing as a fast fan. Okay, all of that is just, no, it's not, we're not FOSS fans, okay? There's no fan, it's not a sports team, like I said before. And yeah, I'll show you guys how to get this shit set up, but just look at this, guys. Look at, look at this lunar rim. Doesn't this give you an erection? Look at this shit, man. And you know you can control all of this yourself? You can't do this kind of shit on anything else. And I know, like, bro, I understand the functionalities there. Telemetry performance, okay? Debunk that. You you, you can't, okay? Like, a v, VS Code is slow as hell, okay? Like, I know there's a comment in here somewhere that says, oh, you haven't used VS Code correctly. Well, I think it's here or some. I don't know where. It's somewhere here, bro. You haven't used NeoVim properly, okay? That's That's what's going on here. Please change. Open source. You do not need to pay. You do not need to hand over your data. You can win your human rights back and have better software that performs better and that doesn't spy on you. No bloatware, no spyware. Get free software. And uh, remember to uh, dab on the oppressed. <laughs> Don't dab on them. Persuade them. Change their mind. Be welcoming. Don't be an obnoxious cunt. But you get the point.